teacher, did you know that if you commit one mistake on your native camp demo class, that's an instant fail? No kidding. I'm not exaggerating. You know, Native Camp has a reputation for being brutal when it comes to the demo class. Because pretty much they're expecting you to be able to figure out how to teach perfectly, you know, by following the basic class law of Native Camp, by simply studying and preparing all by ourselves. Because the thing is, we don't have trainers here. Thus, we are expected to figure out how to do things all by ourselves. And for this video, we're going to be talking about the second possible demo class material, which is the daily news article about White Day. Please don't forget to check out the first video that I've made, and that's um, about drinking tea and coffee. Because the thing is, there are two possible materials for your demo class um, for, um, here in Native Camp, and this would be the second material. So once again, we're going to be talking about the daily news article about White Day. If you're interested, please continue watching. And if you want to be a part of Native Camp, all you have to do is send me an email at askteacherkaren at gmail.com and I will send you tried and tested tips on how to pass all in your first take. Let's do this. <laughs> For this video, we're going to be talking about the daily news article, What is White Day Celebrated in East Asian Countries? And first things first, you have to master the different parts of speech. Is it a noun, a pronoun, a verb, an adjective, adverb, preposition, conjunction, interjection? So uh, basically, um, if it's a noun, uh, names of people, places, or things, a pronoun, he, she, it, they, I, you, or we. Uh, if it's a verb, pretty much an action word, an adjective, any word that describes a noun, that's the shortest, um, the most brief definition for an adjective. An adverb is something that like modifies um, um, uh, a verb. So it ends with a lee. Um, it's, it could be a description of an adjective. Um, and these are different examples of that. And a preposition would be anything that usually shows a uh, direction, time, place, location, or spatial relationships. Um, is it in, on, at, beside, under, between? If it's a conjunction, it connects um, clauses uh, or fragments of a sentence, just like and, because, yet, or so. And an interjection is any word that expresses, expresses emotions, like, hey, wow, hi. <laughs> and it's usually punctuated with an expl exclamation point. So the thing is, teaches um, a lot of the trap questions based on your emails and comments would be the part of speech. So it's going to be super duper easy if the question is about the words from the words and phrases of the lesson, just like exchange. Um, it says here that the part of speech is, it's a verb, right? But what if they ask you about um, a part of speech question from the article itself? Like they found a random word there and then they ask you what part of speech is that word? So again, if you experience mental block or if you panic, please don't panic. <laughs> you could just simply use Cambridge. If you use Cambridge and type in whatever word they are asking you, it's immediately going to show you the part of speech. But make sure that you are also basing your answer on how the word is used on a sentence. For example, the word subject, subject can be used as a verb or a noun. Let's say, um, that's subject to additional fees. So in that case, it's a verb. Or my favorite subject is science. In that sentence, subject is used as a noun. So you have to you know, also know how a certain word is used based on the context of the sentence. Say, for example, um, the question is, uh, what part of speech is exchanged? And again, the answer is a verb. And make sure you explain because exchange is an action word, which means to give something and then receive something in return. And the thing is, please, please, please type this on the chat box. During your native camp demo lesson, chat box is life. If you forget to type answers or explanation or corrections on the chat box, then you could actually fail your demo class. 
simply because of not using the chat box. And next possible question is, what part of speech is ideally, uh, based on the lesson, it's an adverb. And again, you put the explanation on the chat box, say, for example, because ideally is a word that is used, that is used to express what should happen to produce the best result. So what's important is you know how to explain the function of an adverb. Because if they ask you, uh, I still don't understand what an adverb is. So if you don't know how to explain it, Google it. What is an adverb? And simply read from Google. It's okay, your admin doesn't see your screen. So an example would be, um, an adverb modifies or qualifies a word to express a relation of place, time, circumstance, circumstance, manner, cost, degree, etc. So you just have to do the same for the rest of the words, for the words and phrases. And then another example, just like what I've mentioned earlier, is they could just ask parts of speech questions from the article or the daily news itself. Uh, what part of speech is marshmallow day? Like this is used on the article. So the answer is it's a noun because it's a name of a holiday or an event just like Christmas, Valentine's Day, Chinese New Year, etc. So again, I will be typing this on the chat box. And if you're the type of person who types a little bit, you know, slow then then what's expected just let them know what you're doing to fill dead air say for example okay let me just type the answer on the chat box so that you could review this after our class and then <laughs> type it there now moving on what part of speech is east asian so me i do know that it's an adjective because it describes the word countries but again if you're panicking you could just literally type the question part of speech east east asian on on the google search engine and it will give you the answer and then my explanation would be it's an adjective because again it describes the word countries just like european countries or south american countries i would also explain that next possible trap question um what part of speech is okay so this, for example, is a part of speech question that the admin uh, will get from the questions part, um, the free talk part, the conversation part. So again, during your demo class, don't expect that it's going to be 25 minutes long. The admin will ask you to jump from one part to the other because what's important is they get to see how you facilitate a lesson uh, based on the different parts of the lesson. So if you're panicking and you want to know the part of speech for OK uh, and you're like, you know, you bl blacked out or something, use Cambridge Dictionary. This is actually a part of my my bookmarks so that I could just, you know, click it conveniently if a student asks me any question and then I just li literally type OK. And then the answer is OK is an adjective or an adverb. Uh, if you say that someone is OK, you mean that they are safe and well. It's an adverb, and this is a sample of a sen the sample of a sentence. Um, I am doing okay. All right. um, I am doing okay. She does okay in class. Okay. Uh, it's an adjective if it's something that describes. Do you think it's okay to for people to celebrate a holiday even if they don't know its origin? So in this sentence, it's an adjective because uh, the word okay is used to describe. Um, on this question. Now, the next possible trap question would be um, definition of terms. So for the definition of terms, uh, they're not just going to focus on the words and phrases. Uh, they could ask random questions, but the structure is what does blank mean? For example, for the listening focus part, what does romantic partners mean? And you're like, I can easily, you know, explain that, that uh, another word for this would be lovers, just like boyfriends and girlfriends, husbands and wives, as long as they have a romantic relationship and so on and so forth. But but let's say you're panicking, you could use Google romantic partners meaning romantic a uh, partner means a person with whom a subject is involved in a romantic relationship. Um, I would personally avoid saying the word sexual relationship because it's actually taboo in ESL. We are not allowed to talk about religion, sex, uh, gender, politics, and so on. 
So I'll just say romantic relationship. They are, you know, lovers and so on. Uh, they can live um, on the same household or have children together. Now, another trap question is, what's it, what is a handkerchief? handkerchief? So uh, another word for a handkerchief is hanky, right? No one really calls it handkerchief now, nowadays. So this trap question came from the Daily News article itself. So I just used a dictionary or again, use Cambridge, and then you can copy and paste this definition and, you know, put it on the chat box. I would even go the extra mile and, you know, do a screenshot of the photo of the handkerchief and put it on the chat box. Because, you know, teacher, you can actually upload photos on the chat box, but they should be like small photos, like a screenshot. So make sure that your device has a screenshot feature so that when you're explaining something, you can also send illustrations on the chat box. That's definitely plus points for you. Um, now, moving on to other possible trap questions, we have how to use. How to use blank in a sentence. So. Other than the examples of the sentences from the words and phrases part, again, they could ask this um, trap question all throughout the lesson. But say, for example, how can we use the word exchange in a sentence? So it's wrong, it's wrong if your example is, they had a heated exchange of views. Because in this context, the word exchange is used as a noun, not as a verb. And the thing is, on the lesson, exchange is being taught as a verb, not as a noun. So you have to make sure that the example that you give is actually a word that is used as a verb. For example, the couple exchanged vows during the ceremony. So in this context, it is used as an action word, as a verb. Now, uh, another tip for you is if the student doesn't know the answer to a question, uh, let's say there are certain um, comprehension, listening comprehension questions from the lesson and they don't know where to find the answer. You just have to simply give clues, you know, lead the way, uh, let them know where to find or where they can find the answer so that, you know, you're not just going to leave them hanging. Now, another form of trap question is the student questioning, questioning you why they committed an error. Why is this incorrect? Let's say you gave a pronunciation correction, a subject verb agreement correction, um, and then they're asking you why they got it wrong. You have to know how to explain their errors. For example, for the question, do you like celebrating Valentine's Day and or White Day? Um, if the student answers, I like celebrating Valentine's Day, you have to listen carefully. Listen for errors. So, you you would you would be you should provide corrections by stating uh, that's a great answer, but I would like to give feedback on your sentence structure. It's not Valentine Day; it's Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. And what if the student says, oh, "Why is that incorrect?" You have to know how to explain that. You could Google it or you could just explain it based on how you know it. For example, I do know that Valentine's Day is a day that that, that was made because of St. Valentine, the, the patron saint of lovers. So that's how I'd explain it. And again, I'll put the explanation on the chat box. Another example is, say, for example, for this question, do you think that couples should share their romantic dates on social media? The student's answer would be romantic couples who share their romantic dates on social media, blah, 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 blah. So you, you should be able to capture that subject verb agreement error that because the subject is plural, there shouldn't be an S on the, um, on the verb. So uh, the correction would be romantic couples who share their romantic dates on social media, blah, 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 blah. So you just have to simply explain subject verb agreement that if your subject is, is plural, then the verb should not have an S on it. Now, last example would be, uh, let's say, do you think it's okay for people to celebrate a holiday even if they don't know its origin? And let's say the students sorted their answer with because, because it's a tradition and just a way of life. 
And that is not a sentence, but that is a dependent clause. It doesn't have a complete idea. So you encourage your student to answer in a complete sentence, especially that it's ESL. When we're talking about ESL people, you are encouraging your student every single time to answer in complete sentences, not unless they're pretty much advanced and they just want to, you know, really familiarize themselves with the di difficult aspects of the language. So let's say that's the answer, but you give the correct answer, which is it's okay to celebrate because it's a tradition and just a way of life. So we are attaching an independent clause to complete the idea because the word because is usually used as a conjunction. It connects um, clauses together, an independent and dependent clause together. And next form of trap question would be asking for examples. For instance, can you give me an example of East Asian countries celebrating White Day? So you just have to Google it. And there you have your answer. It's Japan, China, and South Korea. So next one is, can you give me an example of sweets other than chocolate? Uh, so I... I honestly pretty much know what sweets are because I love sweets. So I'll just write on the chat box, um, cake, ice cream, pastries, candy, etc. And uh, next one would be asking you about synonyms and antonyms. Let's say, what is uh, the synonym of confectionery? Or what is the antonym of reciprocate? So in this case, you got to use thesaurus. Simply type in the word and you'd be able to see the synonyms and the antonyms just like that. And lastly, listen carefully to the student's readout, pronunciation all throughout the lesson. So most likely during your demo class, the student won't really be able to have a readout, but of course they're gonna be talking to you all throughout the lesson. So make sure you listen carefully for any intentional pronunciation errors and correct them right away. We have to spot and correct errors in a timely manner. So basically, uh, that's it. Um, when it comes to the demo class, once again, it's not going to be a 25 minute demo class. They're going to be jumping from one part to the other. And don't forget to use the chat box. There you go, teachers, the possible trap questions. So pretty much we can't really say what exactly the trap questions would be or what exactly the trap would be, but you just have to watch out for it. This video is basically just giving you the structure of how they ask questions or how they give their traps. And the point is you just have to come in prepared. Anticipate is the keyword. You have to anticipate possible questions or possible situations that you may be able to struggle with. And don't you ever think that your admin can see your screen because they can't. They won't be able to see your screen even though you're multitasking, you're using Cambridge, you're using a thesaurus, you're using the Google search engine. Don't worry, they're not going to see your screen. You just have to know where to find the answers and how to find them quickly. Yeah, that's another keyword. You have to do it quick because you you should avoid dead air on your classes, on your demo class, and you should at least let your student know what you're doing on your end. Okay, I'm just typing the explanation on the chat box and so on. Okay, let me just get examples um, from Google or let me just show you a picture of of this then uh, and that too. Basically, that's how you fill dead air, the easiest way to do that. So anyway, I hope you have learned something from this video. If you do like it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, Teach a Karen, and comment below if you have video requests, if you have questions or clarifications. And to those of you who would want to be a part of Native Camp, send me an email. I'll do my best to get back to you the soonest possible time. Thank you so much for watching you guys and for your never ending support for my channel. Be a blessing to the people around you. Bye bye.